I, I, I even more likely than ever. Not the majority of them aren't saying that. Come on, don't make things up, okay? Now you sound like a Republican politician. I'm joking. That was a joke. That was a joke. But all kidding aside, no, I don't think it is. I was uh, talking to Larry Summers this morning, and uh, there's nothing inevitable about a recession. Inevitable a recession, even after multiple economists, economic analysts, I should say, see a recession as a major risk, jumping 40 percent. So what makes the president so confident about the economy? Here to discuss, president of Zuma Global and financial analyst Heather Zumaraga. Heather, I, I saw something the other day. I think uh, something like 60 percent of business owners see a recession coming in the next 12 to 18 months. And I trust business owners more because they have to plan. They have to look down the road. Um, what are you seeing? Because I'm sure some of your clients are, are business owners. Oh, absolutely, 100%. I think small business owners, I think they're one of the most telling signs of where the economy is heading, and they have to forecast in a very uncertain time, and you couple that with energy prices right now. So while the president says that if we're in a recession or going into one, you must be a Republican, there are certain things called facts. For example, we are in a bear market. The S&P 500, the NASDAQ are all down over 20%. From their highs. That is the definition of a bear market. Now, granted, we do have some uh, buying opportunities within bear markets. That's why today you're seeing uh, the markets have two and a half percent across the board, pretty much. Uh, so it's a good day. But within a bear market, you can have some up days and some buying opportunities. I'm just not ready to call a bottom yet and say that there aren't going to be lower lows because there might. Yeah, we, we were oversold, I think, and we had a bounce, and we'll have to test those lows, as you know. That's kind of the way the market works, and we'll see if it holds. Uh, but let's talk about mortgages right now and real estate. Uh, um, people are pulling back now. It was a red-hot mortgage market, I mean, six months ago. And, and now, um, are you talking to folks now, uh, stepping back and saying uh, 6 percent, even though, to me, 6 percent would have been great like 20 years ago, but... Um, it, it's 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 uh, it's a lot more. It's twice what it was a year ago. And then the prices are so high. Um, people are starting to think twice before buying a home. Well, and another indicator is Redfin, which if you're familiar with online uh, home buying sites like Zillow and Redfin, for example, Redfin is actually laying off a big portion of their of their workers because the housing market is cooling off. During COVID, we had a surge of different uh, mass exodus from higher tax states, for example, like New York and New Jersey, down to lower tax states like Florida, as well as just people wanting to escape crime or wanting to move to, uh, to better weather. And now you mentioned the mortgage rate has doubled in the beginning of the year, a 30-year mortgage, just over 3%. Now, over 6%, we just had the housing data for May showing that home sales have cooled for four months in a row. But yeah. that data that we get, Bob, it's backward looking. So it really hasn't even priced right. in yet. This significant jump, really sharp increase in interest rates that we've had and the impact that will have on the mortgage rate, uh, the on the uh, home buying, the tenure I was looking at right now, 3.3%. So it's really skyrocketed in the past few weeks. You know, I, it was a real red flag to me. I think it was six or eight months ago, maybe more than that, when Zillow got it out of the house flipping business. You know, right. it, they should have never been in that. <laughs> yeah, it's like Zillow is keeping track of the prices, and they said they could not keep track. They could not predict the pricing. Uh, there were also increased costs uh, to fix up homes, because ideally, if you flip a house, you, you buy it, you fix it up, and then turn it around and sell it. So they were having problems doing that, finding workers to do it. But it kind of was a red flag right there. It's not as easy right now as it was. And, and people, uh, I, I guess, are discovering that. Um, what stops this inflation, Heather? I, I, what, what brings it back down to earth? Is it just rising interest rates and a slowing economy? Two things. I think we turn back on drilling in the United States and incentivize energy companies to drill here versus relying on our adversaries like uh, Saudi Arabia, parts of the Middle East, as well as Venezuela, Iran, um, as well as the Federal Reserve raising rates, which they just did uh, by 75 basis points. But the markets want even more. 
someone 100 basis points at a time, 1% moves, 2% hikes. And although that may cause the stock market to sell off, it's too little too late. Inflation is rampant. And so the government, the, the administration is saying they want Jay Powell and company, the Federal Reserve, to do their job and hike rates faster. They're blaming them. But you know what? When things were going well and inflation was low, we had uh, the CPI data back in March over 7%. And no one in the administration was telling Jay Powell to increase interest rates at the time. So I think they're just being used as a scapegoat. Things have heated up too fast and gone too far that now it, it, to get it under control, you have to raise rates uh, a lot quicker than we're doing to catch up. Yeah, they were too low too long. They bought too much debt for too long. And now here we go. Uh, the, the painful way to stop it. Heather Zumaraga, thank you so much. Thanks, Bob.